One of the other tools we haven't looked at yet is our position tool. And you can activate this using the key on your keyboard, just the letter P. And the position tool allows you to move clips around on your timeline, kind of ignoring the magnetic timeline part of it. And here's what I mean. I'm going to hit the A tool to switch back to just our normal select tool. So say this clip right here on the timeline. If I wanted to move this, I could click and drag this to the right. And we can see if I drop it right now, it just jumps back to where it was. Or if I move a little bit further along, it's going to change its position and adjust all of the other clips around it. Based on that magnetic timeline, the other clips around it are going to get pushed to the left or to the right. So I'm going to do Command Z to put the clip back to where it was and hit the letter P to activate the position tool. And now notice if I drag this clip to the left or to the right, we're seeing something different happen. If I drop it here on the right side, none of the magnetic timeline features activated. What actually happened is it moved that clip and overrid what was below it. So it created kind of an overwrite edit where the two clips that I dropped it onto, it actually erased the positions below it. And if I drag it again to the right, you'll notice those clips aren't there. It's actually leaving this blank space. And these blank uh, clips here are actually called gap clips. And they're kind of uh, unique things to, to know about. So before we talk about the gap clip though, the position tool can be used to move your content anywhere you want and it's just going to override what was there be below it. So this may be useful if you're trying to position some clip in a different area without affecting the time of anything else. However, you want to be very careful using the position tool because it is being destructive and it's overriding and replacing other clips that are there. So I'm going to use Command Z here to undo a couple steps here and go back to where I was here. And let me go ahead and use the position tool to drag this clip all the way over to the right side here. So this is one way the position tool is used, is to move things down further on the timeline so they're kind of away from the rest of your clips. And it's created this gap clip, which I, I'm going to switch back to the select tool. And this gap clip is essentially an empty placeholder clip on your timeline. It doesn't have anything visually. It's not affecting your project in any way. You're not going to see like a black screen or a blue color or something else. It's just nothing. So whatever is below it or above it is what you're going to see. And it's just this empty clip. We can resize and change the duration of this empty clip of this gap. I can do this one here and you can see it adjusts where the clips to the right of that gap clip are listed. So if you ever need an empty gap, you just need someone. I can put a gap, say, in between these two clips. I'll move the playhead over to that spot. I'm going to turn snapping back on so the playhead jumps right to it. There we go. And you can actually go up to the Edit menu, Insert Generator. You'll see one of the generator options here is a gap. You can also use the shortcut Option W. And we're going to talk about generators more in a later video. But for now, Option W or clicking that will insert an empty gap uh, essentially a placeholder clip for that. So if I go down, let's go down here. I'm going to do Option W, insert that gap. There it is. We can do whatever we want with it. Uh, it's just an empty gap on the primary storyline there. You can also add those into secondary storylines in other places if you need those gap clips. However, in this case with this project, I'm just demoing that I don't actually need those gap clips. I'm going to use Command Z a whole bunch of times here to undo before I put in any of those gap clips. There we go. So that's how you can use a gap clip and the position tool.